Hey guys, what's up? So before jumping into the podcast, I just want to let you know we had some technical difficulties, unfortunately. So watching this video might be a little bit more painful than listening to it. The audio is fine, but the guest I had on the show, her camera is kind of frozen. So it was very laggy. Uh, you can still listen to it fine if you want. If you prefer not to watch, you can either, uh, <laughs> you know, just close your eyes, look away. I don't know. Uh, or you could listen to it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, but I did just want to give you a heads up. There were technical difficulties, we are aware, but I didn't want to just not post it. I didn't want to lose the conversation. So just practicing a little bit of uh, not being perfect, a little imperfection, putting it out there for you guys anyways, but uh, hopefully you guys still enjoy. Episode three since the relaunch. The relaunch, some of you might not even know, occurred or happened or whatever, but it's fine. So today we have a special guest, and that is Des Hartwell, who also happens to be my girlfriend and you know best friend of. I think we were discussing it's twelve years now. Uh, at some point, we're gonna lose track. I think we already have, but we have to like math it to figure it out. A lot of times I just go by how old my dog is because, <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I got her the first year of knowing you. You did. Um, so that sounds bad, but it's not because I'm relating the dog. You picked out the dog. So I did. <laughs> the dog that... Which is a whole other episode. <laughs> 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 it kind of just... <laughs> I feel like it describes your personality in that show. You're like, I'm going to take this dog who, like, kind of hates me. Um, but I'm going to love it to death anyway. <laughs> but you're the most determined for love, and she loves you now, even though she... Uh, she does you know, love me. She pretends to not love really anybody except for, like, well, me, but sometimes me too. <laughs> She's special. She's special. You want to know something funny? The only reason I, like, remember uh, our, like, anniversary of friendship Every year, I go into my email and I check for the coming out group emails <laughs> and oh look for gosh. the flyer <laughs> to so remember funny. like the day it came, like the day it started. Because that's, I, we've got it's just been forever. It's been like, you know, a third of our lifetime at this point, right? And so yeah. I always forget. So I just look in my email. <laughs> so that's hilarious. Carly, email whatever. <laughs> I mean, that's a much better way to do it. I don't have access to that email i don't think anymore that i no i'm like, sure received emails in um <laughs> but yeah so speaking of so i figured we could kind of talk about our kind of initial journey together how we got to where we are but also your journey i feel like our friendship has had like it's it's a netflix series with like eight chapters to it <laughs> like i don't yes. even know how sometimes we got to where we are or like I don't know like the past us was like a different version of us and and now it we're was. just like whole different yeah. humans and it's almost like our first selves that met weren't even like it's almost like you it's out of body you just observe it from a different <laughs> it's like it wasn't me <laughs> that was weird right but of course it was but you know what I mean <laughs> same 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 <laughs> yeah. so life has a way of uh, making you evolve maybe in, in ways that are not so favorable uh, but you know it ends up, isn't that you know, amazing though because <laughs> yeah. then you know when shit hits the fan you're like this is somehow going to make me a better person <laughs> at least that's what I tell myself <laughs> me too every time I wake up I have to say that <laughs> This day is gonna make me a better person. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fascinating how like I uh, there's this just this thread between us that like no matter the different versions of us, we always just find our way back to each other, and yeah. we just kind of work. You know, it's yeah. just quite amazing. <laughs> yeah, because it's like we're both different people, but we still work. It's we're very very different people. <laughs> but somehow we just mesh well. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I guess we could start, you know, by kind of going into the the how and, and the where. Like, how did we meet? 
Um, so I'll kind of let you start because I feel like you started it because um, you were the one with the, you know, the group, the coming out group. You that. started it. <laughs> <laughs> you started this. So you started. You started this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically, uh, I think it was May of like 2012. Um, we, I, I started a coming out group at the Sacramento Gay and Lesbian Center. It was Gay and Lesbian at that time. That's what they called it. Um, and uh, I just wanted to. I had just moved uh, to Sacramento recently from Texas, and I wanted to get involved in the community. And so I started this group. And um, you know, you, I think you were actually the first person to even show up to yeah. the group uh, and you came in and you were wearing that orange t-shirt about grilling it said something about grilling on it I'll never yeah. forget and I looked at you and I was like holy shit uh, hi um, <laughs> and then I was like pretty much I feel like within like 10 minutes of talking to you I was like you're going to change my life I don't know how but you're important and you're going to be my best friend <laughs> <laughs> and we just clicked and you were so quiet but I was I just like kind of adopted you and was like you're mine <laughs> <laughs> I got and and slowly <laughs> but you did I adopted you and I was like you're mine and um gosh I just feel like after that we were kind of inseparable for quite a while so yeah, yeah we did pretty much everything together like best friends do and uh then uh yeah I lived with you briefly and then you know we were You're still... such a good roommate. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we lived separately, but then, like, we lived in the same town. We did CrossFit together. Um, we went through a lot of life's ups and downs together. I feel like, you know, personal uh, yeah. stuff, uh, you know, and obviously my transition and everything. And basically, I don't know if I've told this story specifically on this podcast I can't fucking remember but um so I was 25 24 maybe when I came to your group I can't remember 24 or 25 um and I had not told anybody that I'm not a soul besides like this girlfriend that I had in DC at the time who just broke up with me so that was sad <laughs> but I was so broken hearted that like I had to talk to somebody and I didn't know what to do with myself like I was I was just like I've ne I'd never experienced heartbreak before uh, because I'd never been in a real relationship because I just didn't have feelings for men <laughs> so that whole thing. regardless of the marriage <laughs> unfortunately I, I felt nothing it was weird uh, <laughs> so you know, karma's a bitch, and I got my heart broken, and just kidding, I didn't, like, break my ex's heart or anything. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> so, it's fine. Um, but, uh, so, I came to your group, and, yeah, I was the only one that showed up, and then it just got weirder. <laughs> like, after it was just me, then, like, a bunch of other people, not a bunch, but, like, other people that... I don't Enough. even think they knew what the group was for. No, no. But we just, I think I went to <laughs> Pride with, like, SAC Pride with you for the first time ever. And I think that's how yeah. we exchanged phone numbers. And then we just kept texting. And um, you worked right we next to We emailed, door, like, every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, it wasn't weird at all. Um, no. <laughs> So, like, uh, you worked next to where I went to school, so you'd come over to our school uh, restaurant. Um, I was in culinary school, so my class was running the, the school restaurant, and you'd come over and, like, pick up some food and stuff. Um, so our lives were just, like, so intertwined without even trying, which was weird. Like, just so many coincidences. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, mm -hmm. so fast forward to now. Now we are together, and, you know... We probably would end up together earlier, but you know, Des was married and everything. I'm not a homewrecker, so <laughs> <laughs> that's the part that he's is really not weird. a homewrecker. He's really anytime not. I have to, I tell someone, I'm like, well, yeah, I have a girlfriend. We've known each other for years. She's my best friend, but she was married, and then I'm like, wait, 
not a home wrecker. <laughs> like I literally said that to my doctor once, and I, <laughs> I was like, "Oh, <laughs> I was like, don't think that about." Did she look and at she you weird? Like, she just laughed and was like, "I didn't think that." <laughs> I'm like, "You did." <laughs> so, oh, I'm the yeah, home wrecker. Not, I'm just not a home wrecker. I promise. I didn't. No, I didn't not. try anything throughout these whole years. We were just friends. No. Um, so yeah, I'll let you kind of take the story from there. Like, how did we get here? <laughs> uh, what do you mean? How did we get here? <laughs> like, well, to, obviously to today, we're married, like, so. <laughs> we, I was married. Yeah. I was married, uh, for gosh, close to 10 years. Um, and, uh, I had two kids. Uh, I, I, grew up thinking that getting married uh, and having babies was what I was meant to do. Uh, it was like valued most over everything. Uh, I think especially because fa family has always been so important to me. So I got married uh, and I knew pretty on, uh, early on uh, that I that I think it was a mistake, but um, I just tried to make it work because I made a commitment and, and I was, I did love my my partner at the time. Um, so then I thought having kids would make it better and all it did was actually make my life uh, much more full of love but much harder uh, because I was then working literally 24 seven. I would, I would work, you know, lots and lots of hours and then go home and be mom. And um, there was a period of time where Cody and I actually didn't see each other very much. I kind of um, became like a recluse. I moved away. Uh, about 45 minutes away and stayed in my little my little house with my kids and my partner and and uh, working my my butt off and honestly hiding from uh, everybody so that nobody could see how miserable I was <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a really hard thing for me um, but then when I lost my mom I I woke up and realized I didn't want to be miserable anymore and then I deserved a lot more than I was getting in my marriage and so I decided to separate and then eventually we started dating and now we're celebrating two years in 12 days mm -hmm. which is kind of exciting hopefully without the emergency room uh, <laughs> <I remember that. laughs> it's not kind of exciting it's actually very exciting because uh, the two years that we've been together feel like God, two months. Like it's just gone by in a blink of, of an eye. Uh, it's just been such a wonderful uh, two years. It's just like, wow, this is this is what life is, should be like. Uh, I feel like we're living a beautiful life together and it's just really fun and <laughs> funny. And by all means, it's not perfect because we have some crazy shit going on, but like <laughs> we just love each other and um, we're best friends and so we just we have a really good time so i'm thankful for where we are now and and yeah. all the crazy shit that brought us to today <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i think it's i think the biggest thing um is that we don't have these expectations of what our rel relationship should be like or you know what life should be like we're just honestly the most content and happy when we get to be together so that's always I feel like we're never like oh our life is you know we joke that our life is boring but <laughs> we still love it because I was like I wouldn't want it to be any different like no. you know it's we're just most content doing life together and I think that's kind of the goal right so um, yeah. it might not be the most adventurous where we're traveling across the world, uh, you know, sightseeing, not yet at least, but you know, it doesn't, doesn't have to be that way. So yeah. For sure. I think, I, I feel like, uh, we really love our routine and when we do get out of it, it's actually really hard for both of us. Like when my boys get sick, um, you know, we or I get sick, you know, we try to stay away to stop, you know, to not share germs. And uh, then our our schedule gets all messed up and it's it's much it's really hard for me. And I know it's hard for you because we're just so used to the things we do. And it's like we could go out and like do crazy adventurous things. Um, but like we want to sit at home and eat and watch Netflix and watch trashy <laughs> reality TV because that's what make us, makes us happy. And quite frankly, we're fucking old and tired. And so <laughs> we don't have 
all the energy to go do all the things to make life adventurous. Like I feel like every day is an adventure for us. <laughs> Just kidding. Right. I mean, this is uh, this is love in your late to mid thirties, guys. So if you're listening, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, I don't mean to like downplay our our lives or anything i think it's just (laughs) that no matter what we're doing it's always the most fun thing ever (laughs) because even if it's like the most stupid shit we're always laughing uh (laughs) you know at times uncontrollably probably not appropriately in public places i don't know but uh it's just fun no matter no matter what we do and i feel like that's how relationships should be i feel like there's so many opportunities you know in the past where things are so fucking stressful uh you know not with you but like (laughs) you know like trying to date and think they're just like these it just didn't didn't mesh well and and we just kind of mesh no matter what's going on we still can find ways to like make the best of it and laugh our asses off and i I couldn't really ask for more than that (laughs) Yeah, I think, like, we don't take it too seriously. We know we love being together and that we're happiest when we are together. But, yeah, like you said, the expectations of, like, what a relationship should look like or whatever, what society says, like, it's not... We don't give a shit about that. All we care about is that, like, the best I... Or at least all I care about is the best I feel is when I'm right next to you, you know? Same, same. (laughs) Maybe we can get into more details of relationship stuff at another time if people that's a whole other thing yeah i was like this could, <laughs> we could just talk about this for a whole hour but uh we, i do want to get to you know like your fitness journey and um kind of how you got to where you are with that today what kind of inspired it or started it and you know all all that that fun stuff because um yeah you're someone who has come from a background who you know, doesn't really have any nutrition background and, you know, wasn't really necessarily focused on health and all that stuff. So what changed? How did it change? And uh, yeah, tell us about it. Yeah. So um, I grew up in Texas eating fried food and and uh, all the candy I could ever want in my grandma's store. Um, <laughs> I grew up with a mom who and really a mom and grandmother who raised me uh to comfort feelings uh, with food Um, and oh you're sad have a cupcake (laughs) you know that kind of thing (laughs) Um, and I I also grew up with a lot of trauma and a lot of uh, I've had an anxiety disorder my entire life because of that trauma and so um, I was a person who used food as a uh, coping mechanism for a very very long time and actually I still do sometimes let's be real Um, (laughs) so I, um, I, I've had some, some, some periods of time where I tried to make some changes and do some things, but I could never really make it stick. Um, and then I even worked with you, uh, coaching, like I can barely say worked. Like I tried for like a hot, (laughs) like a hot minute and then like gave up because I just couldn't get my shit together. Um, and then finally, uh, in 2020, the year everything changed <laughs> for everybody. Changed, right? Everything changed. Um, it was, it was actually. Um, it started when I lost my mom. When my mom actually, my mom got sick. She was actually diagnosed four years ago uh, on the 13th uh, uh, T cell all leukemia. And I got to where I was actually very anxious and not not eating much and I started losing weight. And then I was also on this track to become her donor. And so I needed to lose weight to be healthier for that. And then I was also trying to lose weight uh, to get to weight loss surgery. Uh, I had finally gotten to where I, I had gone through Kaiser's program. I saw the psychiatrist, I saw my doctor, I saw the surgeon and did the consult and they said okay we need you to lose 20 pounds once you get to that 20 pounds we'll do surgery um and so i actually did it in a really not healthy way by just not eating um and i i think in 2020 before i started working with you i lost about 25 pounds uh in 2019 i was actually at my heaviest at the end of that year at 285 um 
And then I got down to like 260 by the time I started with you. Um, but when, when I lost my mom suddenly, um, I watched her waste away very quickly uh, and and live a pretty miserable life where she was putting everybody else first, taking care of everybody else um, and not herself, not taking care of her health by any means. And then not that it caused her death, but I feel like um, not taking care of herself when the leukemia hit her, I feel like she absolutely had way less of a chance fighting it because she was already so weak, right? Her immune system was already shot. She was stressed beyond all means. She was miserable. She wasn't eating well. She didn't have a chance, you know? Um, and so it just, it, it woke me up. I realized that um, I didn't want to I didn't want to live life like that. I, and I realized I was literally heading in that direction of like being just like her. And I was like, God, that could be me in, in any, in, in next year, in 20 years, like, and my kids will have to bury me, you know? Um, and so I decided to leave my partner, um, asked for a divorce and moved out. Um, and um, then, asked you if you would if you would let me try one more time to work with you um and then you know we started working together and uh it's funny because i was literally i had literally just passed like the last thing i i had lost the weight that i needed to to get that surgery and i was going to go for the final consult and then i decided i think i did, did i mention it to you that i had been considering surgery yeah i feel like yeah. i did yeah and then i decided Maybe maybe now's the time to actually make this work and, and work with Cody and like change things. And and I was also pre diabetic. Um which was terrifying because most of the women in my family do have diabetes because they're all quite overweight and, and don't take care of themselves. And um I I dealt with diabetes actually when I was uh, pregnant with Jackson, my my youngest. Um, I had gestational diabetes, and that was a nightmare. And actually, it almost killed my kid. Let's be real; like he, that's a whole other thing. Like he almost died because of my diabetes because my placenta actually started to detach from my body, and he wasn't getting the nutrients he needed. Um, and people don't realize how dangerous like gestational diabetes is or diabetes in general. And so I, I knew that I wanted to change. And so I started working with you and, um, well, to be real, like, you know, when I first started, it was so much easier. I had, I had nothing else to really focus on with that. And, um, I just kind of went all in and did things, you know, spot on and exactly like I needed to just about and and I was very very successful um gosh I think I lost I think I lost like f about 40 pounds um I well shit I actually lost over 50 like I got down to like 198 at my lowest lowest and then I let life take back over <laughs> <laughs> and um but but the, the point of that is that so I, I did gain some weight back, um, and that was correlated absolutely with my mental health, my stress levels, um, my choosing people over myself thing again, right? Um, not managing my emotions, and 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 definitely I ended up recognizing that I have a I had a very um, active eating disorder, a binge eating disorder, that I had to get under control. Um, so yeah, so. Still working with him today. Uh, let's see, gosh, how many years have we been working together now? Like three and four. a half, I think, almost well, four. We started in 2020 and it's 2024. Yeah, August, so. so uh, or, yeah, sure. Yeah, so almost so, four. Almost four. Um, and it's definitely been a journey. Like, I, I think that this is, um, my weight and health is something I'm going to have to fight for probably a little bit harder than, um, and I would really like to for my, the rest of my life to be real, but it's just, it is what it is, you know? And I've just, I've never given up. I haven't always done things, um, you know, spot on by any means. And I've, like I said, I gained some weight back, but I think this summer I was able to, this last summer I was able to get it back under control 
and I lost like 10, 10 or 12 pounds and I've been, you know, trying to keep creeping down and, um, and strength train and stuff like that and just keep up with what I need to do. But man, uh, it, it's amazing how much I've, I've learned about how much it correlates with my stress levels. And that's such a huge thing that we've actually been focusing on lately more than anything has been, uh, I can't, I can't make any more progress unless I manage the things I need to manage, you know? Yeah. So. I I mean, it all comes to learning to, to cope with your emotions versus numbing them, which, you know, food was kind of your, your drug of choice, which it is for many of us. Uh, so it's kind of like learning, you know, healthier coping mechanisms and, uh, finding ways to keep yourself busy or sitting in that discomfort, which is, you know, not fucking fun. I know. Um, but, no. uh, <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think of, um, I had a question I was going to ask you and I totally just flew out of my brain. Um, what would you say was like the biggest kind of mindset shift for you? Um, I mean, you're still kind of working through some stuff, but you know, you've definitely still come a long way. You didn't just go completely backwards and not by uh, any means. <laughs> I mean, you even we'll have moments when we're like walking around the mall or we go to Starbucks or something and you say, like, I used to get one of these like whatever frappuccinos like every fucking day that's like eight hundred calories. Literally. And not think anything of it and be like, I don't yeah. know why I can't lose weight. <laughs> so like right. um yeah, I mean, you know that your eating habits have, have changed pretty darn drastically. It's always going to be like a struggle more than, than you would like your weight and stuff like that. But at the same time, you know, I've watched you transform not only, you know, physically and mentally, but the way that you view food is, is much different still. And I know it's probably always still calling your name in the back of your head when you really, really want it. Uh, but just your like day to day intake and, and how you navigate things, I feel like is probably pretty pretty different so can you kind of tell us a little bit about you know how it's different uh how you like what you did to change that and like what sort of kind of mindset shift that was for you yeah absolutely um I don't know if last time it cut off if if it caught this part but like when I worked downtown in the office like not only Cody you know you know this but not only was I drinking those 800 900 calorie big ass frappuccinos in the morning but then after lunch which would be like an unlimited indian buffet where i would literally go and eat until my stomach hurt then i would walk to the cupcake shop legit (laughs) buy two or three cupcakes and be like oh i'm gonna take these to my kids and then eat them at my (laughs) desk like I cannot stress how I like I can't I don't even know how much I was consuming but I was just I was filling myself with anything I could to make myself feel better and the only way I'd ever found comfort before was in food and so um, today uh, it's it's really quite interesting because today um, I feel like well for one my eating has changed completely i will never ever not crave a cupcake i will never not crave a, i mean most people do or cook or a cookie right like i will never not crave those things um but the 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 major thing that i've learned from you and, and working with you has been those things those trigger foods i don't allow them in my house um if i do it's like on a rare occasion but we'll go out and get it but but that's it. Like we don't buy like a whole package of something, that kind of thing, because it, it it ended up bleeding into my kids' lives to where, especially my little one, my my dad was feeding him like a whole row of Oreos, right? When a serving is two. Um, before I never paid attention to serving sizes. I just ate until it hurt, <laughs> and like now I actually pay attention to my body and how it feels when I'm eating. And even if I have a full, you know, when I have a full plate, um, for one, I measure my food, I weigh my food. And so not always, sometimes I'm, when I'm in stress, create chaos mode, I fuck up and I don't do what I'm supposed to. But 
I typically also know like sizes by this point, you know, portion sizes because I'm so familiar with weighing and stuff. Um, but I'll weigh stuff out and then I'll actually feel now um, because I'm not eating mindlessly. I'll actually feel when I'm full and be like, you know, there, this is really good, but um, I should probably stop <laughs> because <laughs> I feel full um, and I don't think I want to feel the way I know I will if I finish eating. Um, when I am the most stressed um, and emotional, I definitely tend to let that go and just still keep eating. But um, usually I'm able to avoid that for the most part by not putting too much on my plate. So um, overall, I think the other part is uh, having learned that food is not it's fun it's fun and great to eat like delicious stuff like we love our sushi date nights and you know like we love our date nights and, and our and our fun food but um having having a, a pretty set consistent routine with food um and that the types of foods i eat is actually just it keeps me on track so much better than when um i try to like put way too much variety in because i'm bored because Food is not actually entertainment, it's for nourishment. And so and um, so I've, I've learned that I shouldn't just use food for comfort and entertainment, but to actually nourish my body. Um, and then of course now I pay so much more attention to how I feel after I've eaten something and how it makes me feel. Um, you know, it's, um, it's amazing what what food can do to you uh, and how it can make you feel. Um, and not even just like right after, but like for days after, you know, I'll, there's sometimes when I eat the wrong shit where I'm just like hella swollen and puffy, my knees don't work as well. <laughs> you know, it's much harder. You get headaches, you feel exhausted. It's amazing that the difference that food um, can make in your in your in your body and how you feel so um i'm just i just feel like i'm much more aware um do i still have an active eating disorder yeah absolutely uh do i fight it uh every day of my life yeah and sometimes do i lose yeah for sure but um the other part of this is like working really closely with my therapist on um like you said things uh developing coping mechanisms that are not stuffing a cupcake or cookie in your mouth. <laughs> so uh, I've had to learn things that like I enjoy, um, like playing a game on my phone, you know, crocheting, <laughs> just being a little old granny, basically. <laughs> <laughs> we're just confirming um, that we're old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, things that can keep my hands busy and my mind busy um, to kind of help me journaling um, going for a walk, those kinds of things. Um, so I've, I've been working really hard on getting those to be my first line of defense when I'm having a huge craving. And also, you know, food sub substitutions, you know, like having a protein shake, stuff like that. So uh, even though sometimes I do absolutely eat shit that I shouldn't and that I used to eat, like it's not anywhere near what it used to be because I can actually control it for the most part. Um, but I think the number one game changer for me has definitely been the role, don't have that shit in your house. Uh, because we've talked about this a little bit. There's this whole idea of like moderation is like everything in moderation. But for me, um, as a food addict, uh, especially sugar addict, sugar is my drug. I can't have it in moderation. Once I have it, I crave it and I crave it for a while. And it takes it takes a minute to get out of my system, um, and it's much much harder for me to stop once I have one. It's I'm ten times more likely to binge and to eat way more than I should, right? And so the the everything in moderation thing doesn't work for me. So I just can't keep it in my house because otherwise, um, I'm gonna be in big trouble, you know, and get back to where not like trouble with Cody, but like trouble with myself with my body. <laughs> No, no. 
No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that, I promise. No, not at all. <laughs> no, just like, just knowing like, I'm going to feel like shit. Not only that, but then like, I'm, I'm moving further and further away from making any progress. Um, and I'm just, uh, I, and I know that I'm just letting my emotions get the best of me. So yeah, I just don't, I don't keep it in my house because I can't, you know? Yeah. So. I mean, same. I think that's a, a big misconception that people have is like, oh, I'm a coach. I have all this self-control. You know, people even say that like, oh, I wish I had the discipline you had. I wish I had the self-control you had. I'm like, I probably have worse. This is why I have nothing in my house. Like, if you want a <laughs> snack, like, you're going to have to door dash that shit. I got some protein bars <laughs> maybe from like 1982. But <laughs> outside of that, there's not a whole lot you're going to find. Um, but that's just because... I am not someone who has a lot of self-control either. You know, we don't have infinite amounts of it. So the more that we have to practice that self-control, even within our own environment, the more likely we're going to fall into that, you know, trap. So it's like there's at some point, if you have it in your house, you know, it's there, you're going to end up eating it. So it's just knowing yourself and knowing that even if you tell yourself, I'm only going to have two or I'm going to have one serving, like, when does that actually yeah. happen? <laughs> yeah. Like, can you count that on like one hand? How many times does it actually happen? So, yeah. Absolutely. It's impossible. I mean, that's that's why like we haven't ordered crumble cookie. We used to get it every month as like a mm-hmm. celebration of our anniversary. Um, but then we stopped getting it uh, once he went on prep, which was actually a really good thing for me because it got to where like all I wanted was crumble cookie and like (laughs) and all I like all I lived for that day of the month (laughs) where we Mm -hmm. would get it and 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 you've said and you've actually been really helpful in this of of saying like I'm afraid to let that sugar monster back out of its cage Mm -hmm. um because we did have it like right after your show but like we realized I mean, it's good, but it's not actually that good. Right. And it's like, and it's not actually worth like how it makes us feel after for like a solid four days. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And and of course we will have it at some point, but like yeah. we're not right now, and 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 it's for the best. <laughs> yeah, um, because you know I'm not immune to these cravings and stuff as well, and. It, it is a bit of a domino effect because it's like even when you have moderation but if moderation is like crumble cookie once a month it's basically a binge once a month because 1000 <laughs> percent you them all and like you have to always, and then you've like, got to go back for more <laughs> <laughs> and then it kind of fucks with your taste buds and then nothing yeah. really tastes as good and all you want is like more sugar more sugar because you're getting that like dopamine hit because you're like that was yes. amazing I was high. You're basically yes. high. So it's like you kind of want to keep chasing that, especially yeah. when you're in a point where maybe you're in a low point in life and like that's your only thing that you're like, oh yeah, that makes me happy. Oh, can't wait. And that's you where you get hold in on trouble. To a crumbled day. Right. It's like, it's like <laughs> if that's what you're, that's when you should know like something is wrong. Something is wrong in your life if like that is only meant to making you happy. Uh, so that's like another thing to think about when it comes to like coping with food. If it's the same with, with alcohol, you know, you might have a problem if you have a pretty big problem or resistance with stopping um so it's not much much difference there and uh yeah that whole sugar dragon uh it, I, it's it's real like i'll tell you i haven't had it since you know right after my show i haven't i haven't even craved it because it's almost like my brain kind of forgot but I know, you know, when, when whenever you do eat it again, it's going to be a struggle to kind of like fight off that, those cravings for a while. So that's Which like, is why we don't. I wanna, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do that every month. So it's just probably going to be like a very, you know, special occasion so that we're not constantly fighting off that yeah. craving. <laughs> yeah, because it's let's be real. It's a drug. It's a drug just as much as all those other things are. There's a reason companies put it in all their food. Um, and it's, you know, like it's a drug. Our brains are addicted to it. And, um, you know, it's, it's just like if, if, uh, somebody who's addicted to meth or something is like, oh, I'll just take one hit. You, they can't, right? No. Yeah. They immediately fall back into their addiction. And yeah. so, and, and not to say like, there are some people out there that can do it. You know, I just am not one of them. 
And I don't think I ever will be because it's just, it's the way my brain's wired now. Um, and I'll continue to fight it and and um, and work on it the rest of my life. I mean, yeah, we still enjoy our, ourselves sometimes, and but it's just like you have to know your limits, you know? Yeah. You just and have like, to. At least, you know, when we eat out at restaurants, like occasionally or we have sushi, I feel like not even that is really the same as like, you know, baked goods. Like, no. Crumble. Like, no. it's just you're satisfied when you leave and you're not like oh my gosh when can I have that again um it's just like there's something you know the combo of fat and sugar is the addictive part of it so it's not just like sugar on its own because no one craves like eating a bag of C&H in their bed that sounds awful right so it's got to have actual like substance so (laughs) some fat it's baked it's like textures nice and fluffy and delicious uh so yeah, it's about how they, you know, mix it up into this, you know, flavor uh, orgasm in your mouth. <laughs> that's a fair, that's a fair uh, way to put it, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, as far as, like, the exercise aspect of it goes, um, how has that changed for you? And, I mean, we used to do CrossFit together back in the day but I almost feel like for you it was more of a social thing whereas like now it's more of like you ha- you know that it's for your health and you want to oh get stronger gosh, yeah. and you have more goals um, because it's not like a group training situation but uh, yeah how has that like your perspective with physical activity fitness exercise changed for you yeah um CrossFit was fun. Definitely was more social thing for for me. I uh, loved working out with you and with uh, our friends at the time, uh, who were basically only our friends because we did CrossFit. But because um, <laughs> we were in a cult. Because <laughs> we were in a cult. Um, but now it's uh, I definitely like I see a difference in my again my mental health when I don't work out. I'm a lot more anxious. I'm a lot more stressed. I'm a lot more. Um, short with people and like because that energy just gets trapped in my body um and so it's definitely something that i benefit from mentally so much um and it's been really fun to see how capable and strong i am um it always makes you laugh when like dudes come up and are like holy shit (laughs) to you because um of what i'm lifting and it's like it's it's fun to see to see how strong I I have gotten and um, I I can say that like over the last year I probably actually have lost some strength because maybe over the last two years because I had some periods where I was really sick and stuff and then like the stress right the stress has totally affected me in my uh, strength building in the gym um, mm-hmm. and the fatigue that I'm dealing with but um, I still I don't think just you've lost strength you don't think so i feel i feel like i'm so much weaker now no i know so because like i remember what you lift in my brain i so forgot if you, you your don't weights, forget anything. then you would know <laughs> but yeah you this haven't lost strength uh trust me um, i know what you usually lift <laughs> well maybe it's not lost strength but maybe it's like man i've been lifting the same shit for years and mm. i would like to actually progress but um, anyways, yeah, like I, I look forward to our gym, our gym time. Um, it's also like a time of therapy for us because we are able to just talk and like talk about heavy shit and like stuff going on and and then, you know, work out and um, learn new movements and how to properly lift, which is nice. Uh, it's nice to actually have a coach with you to do that because it makes a huge difference. Um, but yeah, it's just a, a really important part of my life that um so before I, before, after I did CrossFit and left it when I had kids, I did not prioritize working out. Like it was not a thing. But now today, um, it is a priority and it will remain a priority. Um, and I will, I always put my kids and my partner first. And like, I always felt guilty, like leaving them to go to the gym and stuff like that. But, but now I'm like, 
oh no, I'm not, I don't feel guilty for this. Like this is important because I need to take care of me because I need to be around for a lot longer. You know, I'm only 35 and my kids are six and eight, right? Like we got a long way to go and I wanna be able to keep up with them and keep moving. And, and it is interesting because, you know, when we were doing CrossFit, I was very strong then, but I was also very slow and very unfit still because I didn't eat better, right? And so I never made any actual progress. <laughs> but sometimes I think to myself, like, I would love to see me go and try to do one of those workouts now and, like, to even just do the run at the beginning, the warm-up run, right? <laughs> yeah. Because it, it's... Like, I was always the last one in, right? Like, always. <laughs> like, I'm just dying. And, like, I had to... Like, oh my God, I just fucking ran a quarter of a mile and now I have to actually work out. And like, <laughs> I was like, I always felt like I was gonna die. But like, I know for a fact that that um, the strength training and the, the weight loss and stuff, like I can just move so much better now. It would be amazing to see how I probably, maybe I would be last, maybe not. But I can, I can keep up with my kids. I can run after them. I can play with them and lift them and throw over them in the air. And they weigh like 65 pounds, you know, they're not <laughs> little kids. Um, and it's always funny cause you know, we'll go to the grocery store and the, uh, I'll, I'll lift them up to put them in the basket and the, the guy at the front will be like, be careful lifting them. And I'm like, why? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I lift, this is nothing. I lift, this is nothing. <laughs> um, or when I went to Home Depot the other day and the lady was like, you poor thing, you lifted all that grass into your car by yourself? And I'm like, <laughs> yes. Is that... I mean, that's okay, right? Like, I, it's okay. <laughs> like, like, poor thing what? Like, poor, poor thing, thing what? I, I'm it independent and can lift shit? Like, what is The only thing I was mean? mad about was getting my hands dirty because <laughs> I didn't wear gloves. <laughs> <laughs> poor thing. <laughs> poor thing. That's sad. Um, no, but it's like my life is just so different now. So I'm just so much more capable um, and able to do things that um, – would have never been able to happen uh, four years ago. Like last weekend when I spent the whole weekend power washing and, and cleaning, I was sore at the end, but I wouldn't have gotten through half of that. Um, just with the hand strength alone that I've, you know, without the hand strength that I've gained uh, with lifting and stuff. So it's kind of cool to see what I'm, you know, what I'm capable of. And um, yeah, it's just really fun. That's awesome. I think, yeah. like, at least one last thing to touch on. Uh, you mentioned before kind of your mindset or justifications you had before, you know, you started on your health journey, weight loss journey. You know, there's obviously there's the health at every size movement. And I, I remember you saying you kind of kind of fell, fell or jumped into that. Um, so, like, how was that? then and then looking back now like what do you think about yourself or why you might have kind of gravitated towards that like what was your mindset at the time what is it now like yeah well process it let's go held at every size you know there there's this this there is still this movement and i and i got into it because i was i it was quite frankly easier than actually recognizing uh the position that i was actually in with my body and yeah, my blood work was like acceptable, but it wasn't optimal, right? It wasn't it wasn't like actually you're really healthy. It was like you're not going to die right now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. But like, you know, you know when I would take these um, you know, my company does this health program where you take these blood tests and if you score these certain scores, you get more points, which gives you a higher discount on your insurance. It seems like a really weird practice if you actually think about it, but I never got the good scores, right? Like I never got the good scores before. Like, so, and I know that like, you know, everybody's different in, in what they believe, but the, my point is, is that um, that whole movement and those, you know, that group of people, it, it just kind of seemed like it was more like, it gave me the okay to just give up and stop trying to make changes to be healthier. Um, and, you know, 
I wouldn't go back for anything to, to where I was before. It was hard for me to get up and off, up, up and down off the ground with my babies. You know what I mean? Like, um, and, and, and I, and I believe that, you know, everybody has, like I said, their, their, their ideas of what's healthy and what's not. But, um, I also believe in thinking about the long term, and, and what certain things do to your body over a long period of time. And it's like, yeah, you're young and you're in your thirties and things seem okay. But if you keep going at the rate you're going, uh, you're not going to be okay, right? You're not just going to stay healthy. Um, just because the doctor is not putting you on a CPAP right now, or like putting you on insulin right now, that's right now. Right. But it, but the fact of the matter is that this stuff compounds every year, right? And it, and it gets worse and worse over time. And then before you know it, um, you can't get up and down. You can't move. You can't do things as well. You get a lot more sick a lot more often, right? And so, um, but I, I think that there's such a big difference in accepting yourself where you're at and loving yourself um, at every size, right? And And saying, that people are healthy at any size because I, I just think that it's just not the same. There's yeah. fat shaming is never okay, right? Um, and it's great to accept your body and not hate yourself for where you're at. But I also believe that there's so much power in loving yourself enough to care for yourself and to like truly do what you need to do to take better care of yourself. And that doesn't necessarily mean like, you know, cutting yourself off to like some super strict diet and stuff like that and like running the shit out of yourself and, and, and exercising way too much to get skinny. It's not about being skinny. It's about like being able to function mm -hmm. now and when I'm 80, right? Not just yeah. now. When I'm 80, I want to be the, the grandma that like is like running around with her little baby grand grandkids, right? <laughs> and that's like going places with my with my guy on the weekend or whatever and and can run around other countries and do whatever I want because I have energy and I'm healthy right but like um, that starts with with loving yourself enough to take care of yourself and I'm sorry but but just accepting yourself and accepting this is what I have and this is this is the body I have and this is the body I'm meant to have um, is I just don't think that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I think. Don't cancel course, me. <laughs> I think everyone, you know, has their own journeys and coming to terms with things eventually. But I think, you know, you kind of nailed it. It's not about uh, being skinny and, you know, like looking a certain way. It's actual functionality and real, like being there for your kids and, you know, not wanting your kids to have to bury you like you had with your mom and you know it's all the kind of domino effect that probably led to your realization of like this isn't even about like just looks it's literally you know living life not just surviving but you know actually being a participant in life that's my <laughs> mantra yeah so. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, no, it's been kind of awesome to, to see you evolve um, and take that power back because I feel like a lot of times when people kind of, you know, get caught up in that group, I feel like I'm talking about it like it's a cult, but maybe that's not too far off, but uh, <laughs> it's like they take the power away from themselves and it's just like, this is just my life. This is how it is. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, if you're happy with that, then that's fine. Uh, you know, you get to live your life however you want. But if, you know, secretly deep down you wish for change, it's not impossible. And uh, it's okay to, you know, acknowledge that it is possible. Yeah. I feel like a lot of times some people are kind of scared to realize that there is part of their life that is in their control to change. Because that means, you know, you got to do things. You have to take <laughs> action, hard. right? Yeah. You have to take action. And mm -hmm. that's hard. You know, my mom died at 57. You know, she knew my kids for, I don't want to cry. Um, she knew my kids for like, uh, Jackson was like three and Avery was five, like for very little, right? I don't want that for me. I don't want that for me. She deserved a beautiful long life. And so do I. 
And that's what I choose, is to love myself and my life enough to keep going every day, even though it's fucking hard. Um, throughout this four years, I've never once been like, I'm giving up. I've had some really bad weeks. <laughs> I gained fucking like 25 pounds again, you know? Like, it has not been easy. But I've never been like, nope, that's it, I'm throwing in the towel. Yeah. It's just about getting up the next day and going, no, I'm gonna try again, you know? Um, and showing up for yourself and just loving yourself enough to keep going and keep fighting and just doing what you can, you know? Yeah, yeah. and I feel like a lot of times too, one big difference for you too is awareness because you know a lot of people it, it was it, it is it or was it ever a mystery to you like i mean because you know <laughs> you, you described your eating habits previously uh so were you ever like i hardly eat anything i don't understand <laughs> like oh <are> you, no <laughs> you're like i know how it happened but <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah no I before like, i definitely I would make excuses 1000%, but like I knew what I was doing. Like deep down inside, I knew I wasn't eating the right way to be able to lose weight. Absolutely, you know, um, absolutely. So I think that's kind of like, I don't know. I think that's the biggest, I don't know if it's like an emotional maturity thing, but I feel like when we're not quite ready for change, we tend to like put up the defenses and so, uh, suddenly everything's a mystery. Excuses, and, excuses, right? right? It's like, there's something wrong with my metabolism, like definitely my thyroid. Uh, I have PCOS. <laughs> yeah, like everything. In, under Everybody the sun. and their dog has PCOS. <laughs> I'm definitely going to get canceled now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's some legitimately things, but there's things out there that can make things harder. Yes. Um, but that's not something that you had personally. But no. uh, but I thought I did at one point, right? I was looking for excuses. I literally was like, <laughs> hey, doctor, can you check me for PCOS? I'm pretty sure I have it. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, You're shit. Like, yeah, I do. I, got, I definitely yeah, I do. do. <laughs> and some people do legitimately have it and struggle, and that is 1,000% okay, and, I, and I, I hope they know that they can get help with that. Um, but... I just, I think that a lot of people search for excuses, right? And yeah. reasons that they're stuck and yeah. you don't have to be stuck. Yeah. And I think that's just something we do as humans, whether it's weight loss or, you know, like your career or education or whatever, you going after your dreams and you can give yourself all the excuses or reasons to why you can't. Absolutely. Uh, but until I, there comes a point, I feel like everyone reaches a certain point where, they either get so tired of the way life is currently and they're just like, fuck it, what else do I have to lose? Uh, or you just get some sort of empowerment to where you're like, I can do this, whether it's some yeah. awful day where you, that makes you grow into a better person. <laughs> you know, like as we uh, discussed, like maybe it's some defining event for you. Your mom's death was a pretty uh, defining event for you, which is awful. Uh, you know, but like, where do you think you would be if, you know, that, that hadn't occurred? Do you think you would be where you are today? Hmm. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> um, I think if, if I had not have lost my mom the way I did, um, I would probably still on a, be on a pretty destructive path. I would probably be, you know what? I don't even know if I, I don't even know if I'd be alive. Uh, to be real, I was I was actually quite depressed and in a, in a really 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 poor mental state, and I had quite often uh, thoughts of not wanting to live, and um, losing my mom changed me completely and changed everything. I would not be where I'm at today, absolutely, had I not lost her. It's like sh it's like in losing her, she gave me like the biggest gift she could have ever given me. And she brought me back to you. <laughs> so, anyways. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know if I'd be alive either. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> so, we're, so we're both really thankful. Like, um, as much as I wish she was here to see me and she would be so proud. Like, I know um, the gift that she left me with. Yeah. Well, I have a feeling she, she sees you and is proud. Um, because how could she not be? Uh, so yeah, well, I guess we could probably wrap it up since, uh, this podcast, uh, thing has failed on us about seven times. So. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> 
any sorry if it last. seems choppy guys <laughs> yeah i'll try my best with the editing uh, so any last like words or piece of advice for folks that might be you know looking to start their journeys or just in, in general anything you want people to know yeah um well definitely uh have somebody that can help um hold you accountable like whether it's a coach or like a buddy that you're kind of doing things with um and and you don't have to like you know you don't have to start big and like and and make the huge 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 changes you can start little and make little changes some people need to do that and that's okay too you can start walking more you can cut out regular sodas you can do little things you know to start you know the 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 change um to to make your life better um but just know that like your worth is not tied to the the state your body is in um the weight that comes up on the scale um and that um it's so much more than that right and so just do it for the right reasons do it for because you're ready and that and that you want this for yourself and um and uh you'll be amazed what you discover about yourself on the way it's pretty pretty incredible yeah it's amazing how uh potentially spiritual a weight loss journey can be (laughs) because it makes you like find different ways to cope and really like dig deep and find awareness and mindfulness and there's so much that's tied into food and like how we live our lives uh daily with food so yeah yeah it's i'm uh, i'm sure you're just like yeah uh, i know shut the fuck up but uh. no i agree (laughs) i agree completely it's it's amazing when you become more aware of it um it's just it's an incredible thing yeah well thanks so much for coming on and telling us your story i'm sure this won't be the last time uh (laughs) We've, thanks for I mean, having me <laughs> yeah we've got plenty of other things that we could talk about i'm sure oh my gosh but we probably already i don't know how long this podcast is because it's frozen so many times so apologies oh gosh it's like three hours i'm just kidding sorry guys um, no <laughs> but anyways um thanks for watching everyone if you have any questions for watching this on youtube Leave a comment below. Uh, if you are listening to this on Spotify or have a podcast, feel free to leave a review if you so feel like it, because that's awesome. I like to see those, and it helps the podcast. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be back together at some point. We'll t- we're together. We'll be back on the podcast <laughs> together. <laughs> some point we'll get back together. We just time. broke up. Yeah, we <laughs> broke up over the computer. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm sure Des will be back. But for now, we'll call it good. Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions, leave them below. Uh, oh yeah, it does. Do you have any social medias that you would like to drop for people to follow? Oh, uh, I think my handle is Des Hartwell <laughs> on Instagram. On Instagram, okay. <laughs> on Instagram, that's pretty much it. I'm not really. So active pretty simple. Else. Des Hartwell. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So you can find her there. You can probably find her on my page too, if you forget. And, yeah, just uh, look for where I'm tagged. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or look for my weird ass comments under every <laughs> post. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But yeah, cool. All right. Thanks everyone Thanks, for listening and watching. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time.